Welcome everyone to educating the next generation of mainframers. We have a group of uh, the Broadcom education team here, as well as some of our partners and some of our consumers uh, of our education. So today we're going to have a discussion on what we're currently doing, what we like about what we're doing, and where we want to see education migrate to in the future. Uh, as you're listening to us, feel free to add comments in the uh, comment section. We will address as many of those comments as we can. And um, from there, we're going to just jump right in and get started with this table. We're going to have approximately 35 minutes of discussion. Uh, and again, we'll incorporate as many of your questions as possible into that discussion. And then we will have a Q&A at the end of this uh, that'll last approximately 15 minutes uh, where you can actually come off mute, ask your questions directly, we'll answer them directly as possible. And um, we'll get you out the door or off this video, I should say. Um, in about 50 minutes, which gives you enough time to get to your next session if that's where you're heading. So with that said, uh, we're going to move on and we're going to start the discussion with some intros. Um, Angelica is going to be our host. So Angelica, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Thank you, Mark. Good well, greetings, everyone. I am Angelica Giraldo. I am a program manager in the mainframe software division for Broadcom. I have been here for exactly 24 years. Um, it, I started in sales enablement in the 2000s and have most recently spent my entire career in product education, working with the team that you see here, the instructional design team. What I'd like to do next is move over to get a brief introduction of our panel. Um, what I'd like for you to answer is, what is your role at the company that you're at, if you're a Broadcom employee or a partner or customer? How does your role impact the consumption of our courses or recommendation of our courses? Let's start with those two questions. Okay, well, Angelica, since I'm sitting next to you here on the stage, I will, will go ahead. My name is Amy Flanagan. I am an instructional designer. I've been with the company for 13 years, um, four in education. Prior to that, I was a technical writer. You'll notice that I am depicted with a cup of coffee. And yes, in real life, I have that right here as well. Um, regarding how my role impacts the, the courses that I consume, it's kind of interesting because in this role, we have to know a little bit about a lot of things. And so often when I'm introduced to a new product, um, Sometimes I may even be seeing it for the first time, so I need to give myself a crash course in it so I can learn enough to, to work with the subject matter experts and deliver the training. And so that's that's how I, I tend to approach it, um, just looking for something to learn quickly. So that's it for me. Uh, it looks like Charles, you're next to me on the stage there. So why don't you go ahead? Thank you, Amy. My name is Charles Gawley. Uh, I've been in, in this industry for 30 plus years, uh, the last 25 years working at the existing organization that I'm at. Um, and my role is director of IT with the area of focus of mainframe security and cybersecurity. Um, and there we support everything and we support uh, a, a host of clients that have various needs. So our training is is constantly changing our environment is constantly changing which requires always great needs uh to keep people educated keep people in the know and to be able to provide wonderful support to our clients so we've had constant needs um, to constantly improve our staffing and our education of our of our uh, teams to make sure that we can adapt to the workflows and to the education that's required to support our clients. Thank you, Charles. Chuck. Yes, good morning. This is Chuck Edmondson with Ensono. I'm a global director for mainframe database and online systems at Ensono. 
So we're an IT outsourcing company. Our clients come to us looking for support in uh, the mainframe database products, including those from Broadcom. So that continued education for my associates is critical to provide the service needed to support our clients. Thank you, Chuck. Tara. Uh, Tara, you're on mute. There we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara Stewart, and I'm an instructional designer with Broadcom, most specifically uh, with the Vitality program being a curriculum manager. So uh, in my role, what we have to do is uh, play a huge part in uh, skilling up folks that want to become new mainframers to help um, offset some of the skills gaps and the uh, turnover that are in our customers. Thank you very much, Tara. Nancy. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy. I serve as partially instructional designer and also learning experience researcher for this team. I'd be very interested in looking into how people learn, why they learn, and how we can serve them better. Thank you very much, Nancy. And Austin. <clears throat> Hi there. Um, so I'm a software engineer at Broadcom, and I've been working on NetMaster for a little over three years. That's our uh, network management product. Um, so most of my training so far has been through our associate software engineering training program uh, and hands-on demonstrations, but I've taken a few courses here and there. Thank you very much, Austin. And Mark Bogler, you kicked us off. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I've been at Broadcom for 15 years, uh, working in the DevOps and uh, more recently the open mainframe uh, value streams. And um, I am plugging away on, as an ID on our courses. That's where Thank we stand. Thank you very much, Mark. So let's move that. Let's move on to the great questions that we have uh, lined up for today. I'd like to start with uh, Chuck. Can you tell us a little bit about the Broadcom mainframe training that you have taken over the years? What your thoughts are? What's so great about it? And things that you wish we could improve upon them on the course or trainings? Yeah, great. <clears throat> well, I have sent associates through the training. I have not taken it myself. Uh, in 21, I sent uh, an associate through DITCOM DB training, and that was uh, very helpful for us as it jump started uh, an existing DBA that I had down the path for DATACOM DB. And this is needed as this is a niche skill. Finding those uh, associates are, is difficult. And also because of the footprint that we have here, we don't need many, but when we do need them, they need to be on the spot ready to support. So that training was critical, as well as uh, then once they had the basis for it, continue on with the uh, knowledge transfer with other associates. And this is a young man who took it. So that helps as far as the age gap you're discussing. This year, I sent uh, an associate brand new to the mainframe uh, space through the IDMS training. And it's going to be the same story. We got him. Fully engaged now um, with uh, incidents and change. He was working with a couple of SMEs and already making a big impact. And that was because of the kickstart he had through the Vitality program. It certainly shortens the timeline from uh, being able to just get in and, and try and, and absorb work from other busy associates, right? You go through this boot camp and now they come out. Uh, with a basic understanding, able to take on some tasks. So, yeah, that has been very beneficial to us, and I'm looking forward to sending more associates through the training. Thank you very much for your feedback, Chuck. I'd like to ask the same question of Charles. Happy to repeat if you'd like. No, if you can. Um, Broadcom, to me, has been a lifesaver for us. Uh, working in the data security space and with the growth that our company has had, uh, we're constantly expanding, and as I mentioned earlier, we're constantly hiring new security people. And with that growth that we're experiencing, 
since we support RACF, we support ACF2, we support top secret, all three external security managers, it is so critical for our staff to understand and be knowledgeable in all three security products. And whenever we've had a need to reach out to Broadcom, they've been there to assist with either top secret or ACF2 training at different levels, whether it's an intro level, and, uh, and intermediate, or even the advanced courses. We have sent people through all three of those classes and I'm everybody that comes through appreciates the quality of the class, uh, the, you know, the, the instructors and the time that is spent teaching the students. So the, the people that I have sent through the class, which has been numerous, every time the ACF2 and top secret classes come up, we have participants attending. And it's really made a huge impact for our team and the support of our clients. Thank you very much, Charles. That's great feedback. Um, Austin, as a, as a new mainframer, I, I'd like to hear from you as well with the same question. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so I haven't taken a whole lot of uh, Broadcom mainframe product training besides uh, ASC classes. Uh, I'm a developer and not necessarily a target user of certain products, uh, though I do use some of it. Um, but having not um, taken some of those classes, if I could, I definitely would go back and take them uh, just to get oriented with products and figure out where things are a bit better. Um, that's pretty invaluable. Great. And I want to tie up this uh, this question nicely to circle back to a comment that Charles made, having the ability to consume the training, whether it's um, introduction, intermediate, or advanced. A lot of our instructor-led training courses have been repurposed to the web-based training modality. And as our active maintenance customers, you're entitled to those courses at no cost to you. So if you're not yet signed up for learning at Broadcom, shoot me an email, send us an email, and I'll be happy to walk you through that process. Let's go to the next question unless my panelists of instructional designers have any follow-ups before I move to the next one. Well, you know, Angelica, I was thinking in, in some ways, uh, Chuck and Charles have sort of answered our, our main question in number three. So I was sort of hoping we could just scoot straight into one of our follow-up questions. Um, so, you know, we've heard about what, um, you know, where, where you found training to be particularly helpful, both on security, products and on the database products. Um, as you send your students and, and as they come back to you, um, are there things that that weren't there that you wish had been provided? Um, you know, anything from even a, a key topic, and we don't need to get too far in the weeds on that, but or if there were, um, you know, like certain labs or, or that sort of thing that, that you wish had been available, or, you know, if, if you wish that the students had had something to reinforce the topics when they got back to the site. Uh, anything like that? Anything on your wish list? Ms. Chuck, I'll go first. Um, and the quick answer is no. What I find is that um, if we've all been through training, your, your, your program provides them with an avalanche of information. And uh, both of my associates came back saying that they uh, learned a lot and then we'd be going back and reviewing the, uh, the, the courses that were presented so that they can see after they've gotten some experience, what was the gap that they had? I think that the best thing would be to say, okay, you know, and perhaps there would be a, uh, a refresher or Q and A follow-up to say, you know, <clears throat> so you've been in your all six months, you know, how about uh, meet for a day and, and see what have you experienced in your day-to-day uh, -day job um, that has, uh, that the training did not fulfill or that you have more questions or follow up on so that it can be a well-rounded experience. I don't think adding more is needed because I do know that um, in the IDMS course, um, that it was pretty fast moving. If you got behind on the, on the training, then it'd be then it's uh, difficult to catch up. So I don't think any more is needed. Well, thanks, and that's great. And I, I like to the um, the suggestion the you know the follow up three six months down the road. That that's a great idea. Charles, did you want to add anything? 
Put me on the spot, why don't you? Um, I know. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, once again, I, I, I would probably echo Chuck's uh, sentiments. You know, maybe some type of follow up um, a, a, after a, a certain period of time, uh, because one of the things that, just like anything else, that we find, you know, you can take training and education, but if you're not using it it kind of fades away and that's the biggest thing is going through the education and applying it right away and if you're not what you you're not using it you lose it um so i think maybe just that encouragement of make sure that if you're going to take a class that you're following up with it executing on it practicing with it and exercising what you learned because it that often happens and we've had a, a couple of people that we've ended up sending through your class Again, just because of that fact, they got tied, tied up, pulled away because of other projects or other support requirements, and they weren't really able to use it. And then the next year or the next time the class was offered, we ended up sending them again. And yeah, at that point, then from a leadership perspective, we try to reprioritize that if you're going to go through a class, we try to make sure that they're using it then and, you know, putting them in a, in a position to succeed. So it, it's interesting feedback. And actually, this um, leads into one of our, our later topics, which is how much feedback is too much? Because feedback is critical for us to do an effective job. And we find that sometimes we ask for too much feedback, sometimes we don't ask for enough. Sometimes we want to do these follow-up sessions and people don't want them. Sometimes they do. So it's great to hear this. And if you're listening in on this call uh, live, please feel free to add in your comments and say, you know, yes, I would love to have a, a 30, 60, 90 follow up, even if it's just, you know, some type of survey. Um, if we can get that feedback, we can make these type of courses available to us. Even if it's just a one day knowledge transfer type of situation, um, we can make that happen. So this is fantastic information for us. Great point, Mark. So, aside from sending your teams to for product training, when you're working with someone who is new to your mainframe team, what other steps are you taking to familiarize that person on how to use the products? And I know the first step is sending them to, whether it's IDMS or Datacom training, maybe in Austin's case, attending NetMaster training, or there are the things that maybe our audience uh, outside of this panel will benefit from that you'd like to share? And that goes to anyone, uh, Chuck, Charles, or Austin, if you'd like to answer that. When you say new to the mainframe team, are you saying new to the mainframe space or an experienced person coming into the team? Uh, no, I would say a new person to the mainframe space. Okay. So yes, we have that training, but we also rely a lot on um, peer to peer training. So. Yeah, right. We have uh, a large set of your products, mainframe support products, monitors, and utilities um, for the other database platforms for DB2 and IMS, et cetera, and the monitoring tools. And those are critical for our day-to-day -day, uh, support of our clients that have those other database types. And so our, you know, our KT, uh, you know, learn uh, having a young associate working with with an SME on the product and what is important to them, how to use it, where to find uh, documentation, how to find the messages and what they mean. That's all on the job training, right? We do, and, and uh, I have asked, and you all have um, responded uh, fantastically on several occasions for lunch and learn. So I've had. Um, targeted uh, one hour lunch and learn sessions for SysView, which has been uh, uh, great for um, experienced and new associates, just the uh, different aspects of using the monitoring tools. 
Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Charles, was there anything you'd like to add or maybe Austin as a, as a new learner from a mainframe perspective and getting to learn the, the NetMaster product? Uh, so I would say that um, almost all of my NetMaster work has been peer-to-peer -peer training, um, but that also might be an aspect of being a developer on NetMaster itself rather than a user. Okay. So great. Austin, what was sense. your? Oh, I'm sorry, Angelica. I just uh, I wanted to ask You're Austin, fine. what was your what was your background before you came to Broadcom? Were you a, a comp sci guy or a mainframe? Uh, in college or yeah so uh, this um this was my first job out of college um so i majored in computer science i went to the university of pittsburgh um and as far as i know we didn't have any mainframe classes at all there's a a few schools around that do but um was not very familiar with it when i first came in okay oh, yeah, go just I, just to provide some other comments that, you know, at, at Insono, we try to always hire the best people as possible. Uh, the people that want to learn, the people that really have a passion, at least in, in for my teams that are, have a passion about security. Um, we, when we do that, we, you know, we can sense that there's going to be long term positive effects and the more training that we can provide, obviously, the better. But one of the things I've learned as a leader is not to throw somebody off into the 10 foot deep end when they're just learning to swim uh, and not to overwhelm them, but to kind of baby step them through some of the processes, the comfort level, and, you know, getting that good sense of, hey, I could do this. A lot of people come into these work environments that are so complex and they're overwhelmed. And I think by d taking the baby steps, really helps build our confidence. And when we can offer them training and education, we can offer them an SME to sit with them and you know basically do the shoulder surfing. That has a, a big confidence boost for them. And that really pays dividends in the long run. At least that's, at least in security, we found that to be very beneficial for us. The people tend to stick around, they tend to last long. Uh, so our attrition rate is very good in our teams. Um, and, and like I said, at, and in Sono, it's bringing on the best of the best. Thank you, Chuck. I'm sorry. Thank you, Charles. Amy, did you have a follow up? I was just thinking as Charles was speaking back to my own introduction to the mainframe. Um, and I was a, a tech writer in DB2 tools, and I can really relate to that feeling of being very, very overwhelmed, you know, and, and, uh, yes, the, the value easing someone in, you know, regardless if they're in a sort of tech adjacent role, like I was, or, or working directly with the products, it, it really is important. And I just love hearing the sort of the long-term thinking, you know, the paying dividends and reducing attrition and all of that stuff. So just a little, a little sidebar there. Thank you, Amy. No, this is great. You know, just keeping uh, in mind the the time that we have left, I kind of want to get a feel for how our panel uh, thinks, what they think about uh, social platforms. So, do you think newer platforms such as YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram can be helpful to mainframe content learning? And if so, yeah, why or why not? Um, how about I start with you, Austin, as a, a new mainframer? Uh, sure. So I, I think um, uh, there is opportunities in some ways. Uh, I, I think it's extremely platform specific. Um, like I, I think TikTok would be a pretty uh, poor platform to try to work with mainframe content learning, but um, but I I do think there are positives um, to it. Um, like, for example, it has uh, really short form videos uh, and that could be useful for showing like how to do certain short tasks or show small updates. Um, they're very fast paced and very easy to watch. That's half the idea behind TikTok. Um, the only issue I think with that is that your typical users just browse randomly or like they, they see all all videos. It's not very targeted. Um, so I, I think that would kind of kill the idea there, but there are other platforms that have that same style of content, uh, but maybe a little more targeted. I think uh, YouTube has this new thing, YouTube 
stories or shorts. I think they're called shorts. Um, but like, I, I think that could be a, um, a great avenue for training. I, I tend to like the YouTube uh, platform so much better, even when, if I'm trying to learn something that I want to do rather quickly, look at a video and just get to the point. Um, I like to get a, a, a handle of what your staff at Inzono feels um, about the platforms, the younger generation, Chuck, um, what are their thoughts? What are you What are you hearing from them in terms of, are those platforms that they may be Googling how to do something with IDMS or Datacom or one of our mainframe tools, products? I use uh, YouTube for tech support all the time as well, yes. on multiple topics. But at Insona, we have a course called, uh, it's the Mainframe Academy. We do our own uh, development of our of mainframe associates coming after the uh, completed college. And it is kind of a boot camp as well to get into the mainframe space. So we have these uh, track A, B, and C programs aligned, and it includes uh, uh, the programs include links to YouTube for various topics. And we go through IBM Red Books. We go through uh, other uh, internally and externally developed programs, but we also go to YouTube. So we rely on that a lot. Great. Thank you. Uh, Charles, was there anything you wanted to add to that? I know that you and Chuck are both from Insono. Yeah, from a, a, a security standpoint, I try to shy away from that. Uh, <laughs> <because> <laughs> First of all, you don't want people posting the wrong type of information. Yeah. Um, that could be sensitive to other clients, could be sensitive in, in nature in general. Uh, and it, you don't want to educate our hackers. You, you kind of want to keep things internal. Um, some of the, the more, I, I won't say ty types of things that we use, but we're a lot of, we uh, are members in user groups where they have like email chains and stuff like that. So you, you're kind of aware of who you're communicating with and exchanging emails and it's more uh, hands-on, you know, what, you know, what if they've experienced something negative or positive, you know, they'll, they'll send out an email to the group, things like that, where it's more of a controlled environment versus, you know, just putting it out there and letting everybody be able to see and share it. Thank you. Yep. Especially security. I mean, yep, yeah, it's it's a big topic, and and the concerns of having invalid or incorrect data uh, or information is definitely something that we're all very careful with. Um, I know that we touched on on actually. My apologies. Before I move on, are there any follow up questions from the instructional design team uh, based on what we just talked about regarding uh, social platforms? Perfect. I'd like to kind of close out or as we get to the tail end of our session today, get a better understanding on feedback. Feedback is something that at Broadcom we're always looking for when it comes to our courseware development. We want to speak with our customers that have consumed the training to better understand the value that they're seeing. Are there topics that we miss that are important to you that we should consider adding to that curriculum, especially because we're in the process of updating it? When you complete a course, a web-based training course, there's also a level one survey that we ask. We're, you know, we're asking for your feedback on that and the opportunity to share feedback as well. Um, Charles, Chuck, so so sorry about that. Uh, Charles, uh, Chuck, from a feedback perspective, how much information or how much time is it too much time to ask of you and your team's feedback on our courseware I for future updates? Yeah, I, I personally don't think it takes much at all. Uh, and the sooner that the feedback can be provided after the classes are taken, the better, uh, while it's fresh in everyone's minds. Normally the classes are, are very good. Uh, and I think now I'll have to date myself. There, we had one issue going back, this was probably 10, 15 years ago on some training and education that we took. Um, we And we brought it to Broadcom's attention and you addressed it immediately, which was wonderful, um, and had everybody retake the class, and it, it was very successful. So Broadcom has been very open to, in, at least in the past that I've experienced, 
you know, hearing our suggestions and our opinions and our thoughts and then acting on them. So kudos to you for, you know, delivering. Thank you. Chuck, anything you'd like to add? Um, going into the IDMS training this year, um, I was given a copy of the curriculum. I passed it one of, by one of my SMEs and he said, this is great. Let's send the new guy through him. And then coming out, um, but he had a great experience and now he's engaged and being productive. Um, so feedback, you know, I'm glad to give it, you know, 15 minutes is not a big deal to complete a survey and give feedback as well as a uh, query from the people who have taken it, as well as those around him, those around the new associate who's just been through the training, how is he developing? And I have asked them, right? His, his associate's manager, his peers, how, how is he doing on your team? Is he being productive? So it's all been positive, you know? Kind of have to be a go-getter too. It's up to the individual. They went through the course, they, they just crushed the course and now they are uh, being productive. So it's all good. Austin, as a new mainframer, how do you like to, if, if we're reaching out to you for feedback on our courseware, what is the best approach to do that? Um, yeah, so um, in my experience or talking to different people, um, they wildly differ on how much feedback they want to give or what method they want. Um, me personally, I, I think a survey is a great one. Um, I know I have some coworkers that love just a call just to talk through it all. Um, yeah, personally, a survey is good for me. Thank you. Anything else anyone from the panel wanted to add before we wrap this call up? and move on to the live session, the live Q&A. This was, I learned a ton of stuff. This was, this was really good. Thank you. I agree. Thank you very much. And for our participants on the line, we will be moving on to our live Q&A. You will see the, the uh, pop-up come up where you will be able to join us. And we're looking forward to your questions addressing them um, as well as uh, we do have 15 minutes so if we do not have an opportunity to answer every single question we will be following up via email thank you very much